Hello, I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will explore how to deploy a Django app with Postgres database to Railway. So Railway is a highly popular web hosting solution, especially in the Python community. It offers a user-friendly dashboard interface, is straightforward to set up, and although not free, it offers a low-budget hobby plan. Let me give you first a quick demo and after that we jump straight into the code and deploy our Django app in easy to follow steps. Let's go! So we can see here the homepage of Railway and we can start a new project by simply clicking this button here. I can show you how the interface of a running application looks like, so let's go inside. This is my workspace here, at the moment I have only one project the awesome project, let's check it out. Now we're inside a project in a production environment and I set here up two services, a web application connected to a GitHub repository with the name Railway and a Postgres database. Unique here is that this interface is like a big canvas, we can move it around and add more components if we like. Let's check out now our web application we have a panel pop-up. Here we can see a history of our deployments. Then under variables, we have our environment variables, metrics, and under settings, we can, for example, create our domain and add a custom domain. All right, that was a quick demo. Let me give you a quick overview now of the steps we will take in this tutorial. So first we will make the database connection and migrate the tables. The second step is to make the connection to our GitHub repository. Third step is to add the environment variables to our web service. Fourth step is to set up the allowed hosts. Fifth step is to configure the CSRF trusted origins. Sixth step is to create a proc file which contains the start command and the runtime.txt file, which declares the Python version. These two files are not required on Railway, but recommended. Seventh step is to deploy the application, and if this is successful, we will, as final step, test the website online. I want to mention also some prerequisites, which I will not go through in this tutorial. And these are how to set up the env file and the environment variables, how to set up a requirements.txt file, which has to include packages like gunicorn. This is our web server, which runs the application in production. The dj-database-url package. With this package, we can connect to the database using a URL. Then the psycho-pg2-binary package. This is a PostgreSQL adapter for Python, so they can communicate with each other and then the white noise package, which we need to serve static files in production. Additionally, to serve images, we need to set up also the static files configurations and run the collect static command. We also need to have our code committed to a GitHub repository ready to be deployed to the web server. These are standard requirements for any Django deployment, so if you have not set them up yet, check out my tutorial videos on how to deploy a Django app. You can find the link in the description below. Ok, let's get started. First we create our Postgres database. So I click here provision PostgreSQL. This will make Railway initialize a Postgres database. Deploying the database. Ok, our database is set up now. It also shows a name for our project, so fun smash. Let's rename the project now, so we go to settings, and here's the name, and I rename my project to awesome. Okay, and update, and the name is updated, nice. Let's connect now this database to our Django app. I click the variables tab to see the connection information. We're using a URL to connect to our database, so we can choose here the private URL, which has a few more privacy features, or just the standard URL. Let's go with the standard one. 
So I'm copying here the value and go to my code. I'm heading over to the env file in the core folder and add the URL to my database underscore URL variable. Okay, save this file. Then I go to my settings to py file. I go to the database configuration. Here it is. So we are connected to this database when the environment variable is set to production or the variable postgres underscore locally is set to true. We are using the DJ database URL package to connect to the database and we're using the database URL environment variable. So let's migrate our table now to this database. So I switch this variable now to true. That gives me access now to the remote database. And now I'm ready to migrate. So python manage the py migrate. It is creating now the tables in the remote Postgres database. Let's go to railway and check it out. I go here to the data tab. We can see here the creation in real time. All right, the tables are created now. Next, let's create our super user. So Python manage the pi, create super user. For username, I choose admin. We can skip the email address, password. And the super user is created. Awesome. So the database is set up. I change my Postgres locally variable back to false. Save this file. And let's go back to Railway now and create our web application. So I close this panel here. I click new here. Then I'm connecting now to my GitHub repository. My repo on GitHub is called Railway. Okay, the connection is established. And first, let's deploy this application. At this stage, this will fail because we have not set up all the required configurations, but we will do that in a second. So I click here this button Deploy. It is initializing the build now. Okay, it is deployed. Let's click on it. Now first, let's import the variables. Here we import the environment variables our project needs, so I click here on Raw Editor and copy and paste all my variables. So I go back to my project, to my env file, copy everything and paste it in here. Then I change the environment to production. I get rid of the developer variable, this is just for the local environment. All right, and then update variables. Great, now our environment variables are added. Then I'm going to the settings tab. Here under networking, we create now our URL. So I click here on generate domain. So this is a random domain railway created for us. If we are not happy with it, we can also change it. So let's go with awesome dash flicker okay this domain is still available update here we can also add a custom domain if we have one and now we got a url so if we click on this link here we got the url working but obviously no response yet because we have not yet finished the setup so let's copy the domain and let's go back to the code. Back to the settings.py file and let's set up now the allowed hosts. So this is what you see when you first install Django. So it gives you an empty list, but in production, this variable needs a host. So we could, for example, write 
the asterisk, which is the symbol of a wildcard, so every host is allowed, but this is not very secure. So let's list here all the hosts now, which we allow access to our app. So first I add my local hosts, so localhost, then also the local IP address, so 127.0.0.1, and then I'm adding here the remote host. So this is the domain I just created. Okay, these are the allowed hosts. Another variable we need is the CSRF trusted origins. And here we add the URL of our website. So again, I add here my domain with the HTTP in front. Railway gives me a secure HTTP connection out of the box, so I write HTTPS colon slash slash. Okay, this variable is set up now as well. We can save this file and we could deploy this application already on Railway. This would work. However, it is recommended to add a proc file with a start command and a runtime.txt file for the Python version as well. So let's do that too. I go to the root of my project, create a new file, the proc file, like that, with no file extension. And here we add the process type, which is web, then the web server we're using, we're using gunicorn, and then the application we would like to run. And the application is in the whiskey file in our a underscore core folder. So a underscore core dot whiskey. Like that. Okay, save this file. Now next the runtime.txt file. Again in the root of our project. This file just declares which Python version we are using. So I'm writing Python dash, and in my case it is 3.11.3. .3. Okay, that's it. Save this file. And now let's push these updated files to GitHub. I name this commit deploy to railway. Then push origin. Then back to railway. Here I still have to deploy the environment variables I set up before, so I click this button. And the new build has been initialized. A few minutes later. Okay, our app is deployed now. We can see our latest commit is displayed here. And let's check out the website now. So refresh. And voila, our website is online. Now let's do some testing and populate the website. I add a category, then I sign up with a new user and post an image from Flickr. So first I'm logging into my admin interface. I create a category, so I'm going to my text table. Add tag, landscape, okay, then I also add my new domain to the sites table. So here instead of example.com we add our domain. And display name awesome, okay, and save. Then back to the home page and our category is added here. Great. Now I sign up with a new user. So I log out from admin. Create a new account. Add a profile image. Okay, and submit. Our profile is created. Now let's create a post. I find an image on Flickr. I choose this one, a nice picture of a lake. 
copy the URL and create a post. All right, nice. We successfully deployed our app now to Railway. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to this channel for more awesome front-end and back-end tutorials. And please leave a comment below that you subscribed. That would help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. I see you in the next one. Stay curious, my friends.